This is true buzz That Mary Jane Now we ain't new to this For my stones And for my cannabis enthusiasts Never heard a show as good as this uh, Number one, it's the best Bringing in many special guests In the industry of cannabis Business owners to grow us Even artists you know of So sit back and just roll up Perfect show for my smokers True buzz Hey. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the True Bud Show podcast, uh, your go-to podcast for basically anything cannabis. And if it's your first time tuning in, thank you. We got a special one today. We got Flow Gardens in the building. We have David Miller and um, Eric Metzer. Meltzer. Melzer. <laughs> Melzer. See, I, I just asked him right before this and I, you know, double check it. But uh, so good to have you guys here. Um, Flow Gardens, you know, let, let's uh, take it straight from the source here and uh, hear, hear from you guys how you guys started out. Right, yeah, we, Jack. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So we uh we started you know a couple of years ago, it's been about two and a half years. Um, we've been in the hemp industry, or I have, doing indoor flower for a while, and uh, we started this company as an R and D facility, uh, with our other partners HLG, to uh, R and D their grow lights and then the different grow methods that we do, and. Uh, in that process, we built out a facility and then built a brand. And then now we're just uh, selling all around the country trying to build this brand. Nice, nice. Speaking of which, I do have, you guys were kind enough to send me out a little something here. So I'm just going to open this right now and kind of see what we have in here. Um, but yeah, it's super, so you have like a tw- like 25 years of growing experience. And um, I think it's super interesting that we'll get into is that, you know, the facility that you guys are in Tennessee, that's super cool. So excited to hear about your experience and just kind of that, that world out there and how that's going. Okay. I can get this open. Bear with me here. <laughs> Well, those are some dope little containers right there. So I got four. Hold it up here. Chop that real quick. <laughs> so we got four. It looks like four different. Oh, that's small sour lifter. Okay, okay. So, and now I'm, I'll go through. So we got sour lifter. We got sour uh, super haze. Mm-mm, these are smelling good, man. See, the crazy thing to me is I wouldn't know when I smell these and look at it, I wouldn't be able to, you know, pick apart the cannabinoid structure right away. Like I would think there was, you know, THC in here, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the flowers, they're, they look identical, if not better than most dispensaries. You wouldn't know until you smoked it. And that's part of your like R and D process is figuring that out, finding the strains that are low in uh, THC and higher in different um, CBD and CBG and all that. Exactly. Yeah. We, we research, we do the best we can here, you know, cause marijuana is still illegal in our state. So we're hitting all the different cannabinoids, the alternative ones, the CBD, CBDs, just found a CBC. So yeah, that's, that's our gig, man. We're just trying to do the best we can right now till we get some kind of legalization out here yeah I, I, that's like hard for me to wrap my head around i imagine it's super hard to make that happen when it's like uh, yeah like how does that how does that process work for you? you do the research ahead of time like okay this has minimal th or is it something that you can do during the growing cycle or process where you can kind of play with those levels no not at all that's mostly in the genetics from the seed so we research you know really good breeders in the space, which there's not many. I mean, there's five to 10 probably that I know of. Uh, and then, and we just dive in and just, you know, pheno hunt and test out all the different genetics, which is something different than the marijuana industry. They, they don't have to test each plant, which we do. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of a blessing in disguise because we're able to to dive in and look at these different cannabinoids and see the different effects and the different medicinal values to them. So that's kind of how it goes. For sure. And I like on your site too, or, you know, how you test and have the terpene profile there for your testing. Um, I, I don't think it's, you don't mandatory in California out here, but the whole terpene profile, you know, just terpenes in general are so interesting. And um, I love that. I love what you guys are doing with that and, you know, really dialing in. Cause I, like I said, I could only imagine what goes into producing one of these, you know, grapefruit and figuring out how to bring it to life and what you guys are doing with your living soil process and all that is 
super interesting to me. And um, and congrats too on uh, wins the Emerald Cup, right? That you were saying, David? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's Blazed exciting. First and second, our uh, Orange Blaze number three won first, and then uh, Grapefruit won one second. All right, got 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 one of them right here, the little Grapefruit. Um, yeah, I was you know where I was today. Actually, I popped by. I saw that uh, Woody Harrelson won some award for you know the person of the year or whatever. Um, but I stopped by that Woods Dispensary. Super dope today. Actually, really cool spot out there. Yeah, yeah, I was wanting to stop by there. Never made it by though. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah, super cool. Just bought a new little hand blown piece there. I have around here somewhere. Um, but yeah, su super cool spot. Yeah, I love seeing all these uh, Emerald Cup winners, and yeah, it's super cool that you guys are doing that. Hey, yeah What's we your... felt like very honored number one just to be included in that group you know being out of northern california and it's a really tight group so it was almost a little uncomfortable coming from tennessee <laughs> in that group just like an outcast but you know it is what it is they it, it's just beautiful to be included so. yeah you, you could tell everybody knew everybody except for us <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but it was cool to these Tennesseans, uh, Eric specifically, you know, with his talents and growing, like taking home that award and not not being from California, being just being able to be a part of that, like he said. Yeah, like like I'm, it's just crazy big. That's awesome that you guys did that, you know. Um, so what what's kind of the it looking like out there right now in terms of you know legalities or kind of what's is there some stuff coming down the road that's exciting or where where does it stand right now in Tennessee with legalities? There's been a couple bills that have uh, come across the General Assembly um, this year. One was a full-blown uh, medicinal and rec bill, and that got that got shut down. And, and talking to a lot of the people at the General Assembly, the representatives and the, the state senators, they're at least when you go into their office and talk to them, like they're all about supporting medicinal legalization. Most of them aren't for rec, so. I think really the key is um, is getting a good solid recreational bill out there that we can just defend whenever the you know the the naysayers come out and and start challenging and you know in the in the hearings. Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of tape on everything, huh? It's uh, it's part of the game, part of the game. It's exciting that you guys are doing it out there and you know paving that paving the way because I imagine there's not much other competition out there doing the same thing or similar. Yeah. You're talking about in the CBD. Well, space. I mean, being from this space. Yeah. And in the, in the CBD uh, flower in particular, I feel like there's so many people doing CBD, you know, gummies or drinks and stuff, but I feel like having the quality flower is pretty rare or a lot rarer to see. You know, it, it is, it is, but uh, Tennessee in general and North Carolina are two really big states for indoor CBD because once again, that's all we can do. So all the growers that, you know, that just want to grow the plant, this is the best we got. So it's a pretty big, I wouldn't say a big market, but there's definitely a handful or two handfuls of, of really quality indoor growers around here. So and will you utilize, because if, am I mistaken, did I see gummies? You guys have gummies too? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um. So do you utilize like your trim and shake for that to, to and then like make a CB, like how, how do you make your gummies if you don't mind me asking? No, we outsource our gummies through one of our farmers out of Alabama. They, they use biomass to make our crude oil and then, then they've got somebody that makes the gummies for us. Okay. And um, kind of back to the soil, what what do you notice are the biggest differences between like living your living soil that you're doing and like hydroponic, like in, in terms of the, maybe the finished product? What are some of the like the telltale signs that would be for somebody that has experience like you to pick apart? OK, so uh, it's pretty interesting things. I never until I got into the flow garden, started growing different grow methods it's it was uh super neat to see so for example uh certain strains in the living soil the bud structure is totally different than the bud structure in say a hydroponic room um, the living soil is really dense but like a smaller christmas tree type bud if that makes sense and then in the uh, rock wool or hydroponic room 
it's still dense, but it's it's more of a swollen type of bud. It just the structure looks different. The terpene profile in lemon soil is definitely going to be a little higher. That's the other thing we've noticed. Um, and then the flavor maybe a little more so. And then that, that's probably about it. Yeah, that's um. And now that I'm like thinking of different buds, I've seen that companies I know who do them as you were talking, I'm like, okay, that makes sense then. Cause I've seen some of the hydros for sure mm -hmm. kind of have that like puffier structure yeah. and like some of the soil ones, like you're saying, kind of have that like, yeah, like more of the Christmas tree look. Yeah. Uh, yes. but yeah. I'm yeah, man. <laughs> do you guys have a favorite, uh, what's your favorite strain that you like for personal For me, uh, grapefruit. Uh, as far as CBD goes, grapefruit, as far as all around, uh, big fan of the breeder Capillator who's out there. Um, his Miracle Alien Cookies, big fan of, and then also Blueberry Muffins from um, Humboldt Seed Company is another one of my favorites. I'm a sucker for the blueberry. I love blueberry. I know, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> all day long. Yeah, I'm a... Uh... I'm really excited to try this too. And um, I have a buddy who's like, who lives out here and um, he's always going to dispensaries and looking for low, high CBD and low THC, or just, he's actually just looking for CBD in general. So now that I'm saying this kind of loud, it's kind of interesting. I, have you guys, I feel like there's a place in the market for it, even in recreational states, or I feel like there's a, there's a sector of the market that would be, that's looking for something like this. Have you guys found that or um, kind of approached that? We definitely uh, work towards that. It's a little trickier with all the laws and the regulations getting That's into uh, marijuana dispensaries, but I, I agree totally like one to ones like THC, CBD, two to ones, or even CBD, um, huge fans of, I think that needs to be a place in the market and it needs to be in dispensaries. So you have a choice. It's not just high THC, you know what I mean? So uh, we're working on it for sure. It's just tough getting in these markets. I imagine. I, well, that's why it's awesome that you guys can, you can ship, can you go to every state or is there, there are there a couple that are cool There's with a the couple. CBD? Yeah. There's but that's awesome. Couple, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That you guys can still, that that's so big. I can't, I mean, and I'm kind of on the fence or hear different people, you know, talking about the day when let's say it became, becomes federal, like, or just opening up that way for everybody to be able to get it in every state. So then I feel like the product is really going to speak, have to speak even more to it for itself. Cause in certain areas you can only get certain things. Um, so that just really excites me, you know, doing online content and stuff and just being able to have that reach. And it's super cool too, that you're building your brand up, you know, nationwide. So as things keep progressing and, you know, you never know the fan base that's already built in place there. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, over awesome. uh, two or so years, um, we've actually had a, only had our online store for um, a little over a year, but we have about five thousand customers now. Nice. So we, we're 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 building our brand in the CBD space, and we can't wait to be able to expand it um, when things do change. That's awesome, man. Um, I was looking. I don't, I don't know if I saw a spot for it. Do you guys do any affiliate programs or um, stuff like that? Referral stuff. I don't know, do we? No, <laughs> uh, we don't. Not not right now. And so, yeah, it's, it, it's always there. You know, it's always there waiting. Um, I'm always curious about it because I do that with a bunch of different companies and it's always fun to see. And then, you know, it's just a great way to, to for that um, expansion element of just that kind of old school, just, you know, friends and family thing too. So <laughs> yeah, I'm a big love fan. collaborating with um you know, just about anybody in the space just to, you know, increase the love and the, just the love of the plant. So, but we're, we're definitely open to collaborating and with affiliates and things like that. For sure. For sure. So were you guys out in NorCal for, for the cup? Yeah, they it was actually in LA. Oh, go ahead, oh it was Eric. LA at the Green Street Festival. Okay. That, that's where it was, right? Downtown LA? Yeah. Yeah. They had the festival there, but there was actually an award ceremony and a theater down there. David, do you remember the name of the theater? I can't remember. It was uh, it was an interesting name. No, <laughs> I should know. I should know. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> no, because I saw that I was out of town actually. Um, last, this past weekend, I believe, is when it was, and I was out of town. But um, yeah, I um, when you guys are out sometime, definitely feel free to hit me up anytime, and we can connect and um, you know, just see what's up. Come check out the studio space out here and whatnot. And 
like you said, collaborate and just that, that's why I yeah. love the space so much, man, is the collaboration and just openness of everybody. 100%. No doubt. No, I'm trying to think what I had another question about just being in Tennessee out there and kind of the, how it's always well, it just about kind of your facility setup. So this is all indoor, right? Everything's indoor. Or do you guys have some kind of mixed light stuff that you do as well? No, everything's indoor. Yeah, it's a, it's a research and development facility. So we have seven, well, no, six flower rooms. One's double tier, so we call it seven. Um, but it's everything from living soil to flood and drain. Looks uh, like a, yeah, looks, looks, like like a, we, looks like we lost them. I'll, uh, I'll yeah. pick back up. So we got, we got living soil. We got the flood and drain, you know, which is, you know, the ebb and flow. We have the top feed, so the tubes going into the, the Rockwell cubes. Then we have the deep water culture system as well. Um, what's so what's it, the deep water culture system? It's 100% uh, me media free. So there's, Eric, you want to go into the DWC? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there's a company out there uh, in California, close to you, it's called Current Culture. So pretty much the plant, is put into a net cup and then the roots grow down into the water like an oxygenated water to where there's air stones and nutrients in the water and that's where they the roots live um and we're finding out through data through this facility that this method actually produces four to seven percent more cannabinoids than any other growing method uh, that being said the the flower it doesn't produce as as much quantity but the quality is definitely the highest so that's what we've found so so far in this method uh, that's that's part of our whole facility is just finding out the best way to grow the plant you know the highest quality most efficient way that's super interesting are there are there a couple other kind of like more ex that almost sounds a little experimental in a way you know because it's newer technology but are there any other like methods kind of just per percolating on the outside that like it's, I didn't, I haven't even thought that deeply about just different ways to grow cannabis. Like in the, you know, what are there some other ways that will develop in the future? I wonder. There is uh, the one that we don't do that I'm the most partial to is called aquaponics. It's uh, basically deep water culture. Well, it doesn't have to be. It's a form of hard hydroponics with uh, fish. So it's, it's almost organic hydroponics where you incorporate fish in one tank and then you have biofilters like gravel or any kind of like that to change the fish poop over into plant food. And then the plants take it up. And I've grown that way in the past in a hobby scale and I haven't seen anything any better than that as far as quality. It's, it's pretty amazing. So that's something we're going to get into eventually. I'm not quite there. <laughs> wow wow that sounds amazing that sounds like it would even be like a super cool thing to see in a dispensary like a big you know wall like that and fish swimming oh, around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah i think there's one new Heavy company bananas. out there that <laughs> well, actually the name of the company is called fish shit isn't that right eric <laughs> yeah yeah there is a company called fish shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting do you guys experiment as well um in that r&d process with different curing methods uh, we have for sure uh, so being a grower of two decades plus I've already did with all the different methods of curing drying and all that and so we've honed in a pretty solid method when I first started flow gardens uh, I I tried because we scaled up to you know tenfold of what I was doing I was looking more towards the industry standard of like a 60 percent humidity 60 degree temperature and found that that was losing a lot of terpenes. So we've dropped that since then to a lower humidity. And that seems to be the sweet spot for us. But, you know, it's everybody's different. Everybody has their own method. So we constantly try to tweak it. But I think we've, we've, we've found a sweet spot right now where we're at. That makes awesome. sense. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's uh, super interesting to see you know just just hear that like the different levels and everything and what it takes to really dial it in and like you know i always feel for you know growers and just the as a whole because it's like you know you're putting so much time and it's such a labor of love into something that's you know has a life of its own so 
you know you hear the horror story sometimes what happens and, you know it's uh well so when when did you were you growing something before were you like always interested in growing stuff before weed were you doing just like herbs or anything like that or was weed or cannabis like your first just kind of fell in love with it so uh, i mean if we want to go way back yeah I, I grew vegetables and such with my mom as a teenager and then my buddies were growing and i bought a plant off of them and when i was just a kid i was i ended up growing like a little secret grow in my parents crawl space and then they busted me and since then i've grown different ways but yeah i've always kind of had a green thumb and just the passion as soon as i grew that first plant dried it cured it smoked it and got high and i was like wow this was basically free it was like a light bulb <laughs> you know and ever since then i've just tried to expand that and i've always had a passion just to try to grow the best plant possible so well it sounds like you've been uh doing your due diligence with these awards so uh <laughs> the hard work's paying off man <laughs> What, what are you guys um, kind of this year uh, or, you know, just in the future, what are you guys most, some ex, like most excited for with Flow Guard and some exciting things coming down the line for you guys? I mean, I think um, probably the most exciting thing yeah, for me. me. Oh, go ahead, Eric. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, the most exciting thing for me is, you know, we, Eric started this with um, literally an empty warehouse and now it's, you know, a 10,000, square foot facility with all these methods and we're just now fine tuning our systems and he's he's doing these pheno hunt runs and we're just finding like he mentioned earlier new cannabinoids super high terp profiles the the sour lifter came in just under five percent which is double a high quality terp profile usually if you're at two percent for terps you're good and this last one hit almost five. So, I mean, when it comes to the entourage effect and actually getting the value out of the medicine, nice pick. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little sour <laughs> lifter right there. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, you can smell it. If you didn't squeeze that sucker and smell, I mean, it smells straight like lemon. <laughs> yeah, no, it smells a bit bomb. That's why I was like, dang, this is it. I would usually light it up right here, but I'm uh, not in my usual spot. <laughs> yeah so i mean what i was saying like what eric's doing now and what we're all learning from him is you know now that we've got all these strains and we fine-tuned them we got 30 plus mother plants growing now we're starting to cross you know these different strains and cultivars and you know we're creating our own seed bank if you will and um i mean the opportunities are endless what we're going to find out with this plant because there's just there hasn't been you know documented research like there is in every other industry so we're, we really feel like we're trailblazing in that sense mm -hmm. and and I, I honestly think like eric said we're just trying to do what we can do to survive but you know with what we're focusing on and being so good at it in the cbd space we're doing all this research on alternative cannabinoids where the states that are legal they're doing all this research on THC and how do we get the, the most THC plants. And, you know, there's some, there's some companies out there, like one of the, our, the competitors in the CBD space was Glasshouse. You've probably heard of them. They, you know, they own a dispensary chain. So there's companies like that, that are including CBD and other alternative cannabinoids, but for the most part in those rec states and medicinal states, it's just straight THC. Yeah. And that, that makes me really happy to hear. And that's part of the reason I was so excited to talk to you today is because that's been the talk for so long and it's changing more to terpenes. I've noticed even in the past six months to a year out here, but just, you know, everybody looking for the cheapest possible thing. That's the most potent and just Delta nine and you know, a lot of other stuff, all the other elements fell to the wayside for a couple of years. So it's good to see it coming back into the conversation in California. And it's awesome that you guys are on the cutting edge of it. And um, yeah, man, that's just, re that's really dope. And then, you know, once, once the legalities open up for you guys, you guys are already positioned with all your, you know, with everything in place to just rock it out, <laughs> like with, <laughs> with, with, with the THC in there. But I mean, these other elements are so important that like, it's really worth talking about to everybody and just spreading the awareness because the average person doesn't know for sure, you know, like what, what these are, what they do or how it affects their high or how it's different. So having those, you know, including that is really, really important. Yeah. And, and just to nerd out on you a little bit with the, with a little that I know, you know, the, 
the endocannabinoid system, you know, had, wasn't discovered, I think, until the 90s. So not to discount THC, like you said, that's one of the super helpful medicinal cannabinoids, but like we don't even know what all these cannabinoids can do, especially when they're working together. So, yeah, when I when I found that out that we have that endocannabinoid uh, system, I was like, this is nuts. Like we have, I already knew, I was always all about cannabis because it was natural. But then when I found that out, I'm like, all right, there, there's definitely something way bigger here. And like you said, that's the super exciting thing is to see where this research will take us, you know, 10 years from now, what, what we'll be talking about on another podcast, you know, like it's going to be crazy to see. But yeah, I just got to, I just got to notice here. I need to upgrade my zoom. If I might have three people on, it only lets me do 40 minute calls. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, is there, um, I'm trying to think, I, I wanted to definitely just talk about like the Tennessee element, which we covered and what you guys are doing and I, the terpenes, do you, do you guys notice um, do you, if you're naturally more drawn to certain terpenes? And I think that with hand in hand goes with certain strains. Like, do you find that your, you know, endocannabinoid system possibly likes maybe lemonine more than myrcene? Or do you think it's just like, you know, the time of the day or whatever? You know, I, th I think everybody's body is different and how it responds to the, the terpenes, like generally speaking, like carefulene. You know, which is in black pepper that tends to be a calming agent for people but you know then you throw in carifeline with limonene or humulene or some of the others it you know it could do something totally different depending on how your endocannabinoid system is you know is is, is taken in cannabinoids so I, that's a great question i don't know how to answer <laughs> yeah um, yeah i don't know how to answer that one either it's more just a personal preference for me it's more flavor you know i can't wait for the science to come out to where it's telling you this terpene makes you tired or this terpene gets you up or this terpene you know makes you feel you feel euphoric you know <laughs> that's coming down the line i just yeah you know, right now we're just not quite there <laughs> yeah yeah well and that's and i'd have to, i know it's a weird question that's where i kind of feel it because i was like always naturally kind of drawn more towards like pinene and lemonine i realized and like more sativa like strains mm -hmm. um, but then the reason i asked because i started i had one of these little shots this company i work for these koan cordials so we do different terpenes and different cannabinoids in there and then i noticed mm -hmm. the the couple that i was more drawn to in these forms were had the most lemonine and pinene in there as well so i've started thinking like is this part of my body is that i'm just naturally drawn to i love them all but so that's kind of i guess where my question was coming from i know it was a weird one so sorry to <laughs> uh, no that's cool i like that i like, I like trying to figure that shit out <laughs> you know, always trying always trying to figure it out man um yeah, I'm excited to try these. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Sorry I had to like kind of cut it short for not having a longer pain for the Zoom, but um, I appreciate you guys. You're welcome out here anytime. And um, I'll be, you know, smoking some of this up in some videos and doing some posts, showing you guys some love. And seriously, that's so big on the award wins, for real. Yeah, man, hit up that. It, it's our pleasure to be on and hit up that grapefruit first if you don't, if you don't mind me recommending. Okay. It's, okay. Um, <laughs> it's going to blow your mind, but, you know, it's, it's obviously yeah. not psychedelic in this or psychotropic like THC, but it does give you a head change and it does give you that uplifting um, sativa thing that, you know, that you mentioned that you like. So I think that you'll, you'll dig that grapefruit. Awesome. Thank you for the recommendation there. <laughs> cool, fellas. All right, Jack. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. Um, I'll let you know when this goes up and uh, yeah, we'll be in touch, man. And uh, everybody go check. Is it flowgardens.com? Yep flowgardens.com go check it out guys uh and i'll let you guys know what i think of it when i smoke it up so thanks again for coming on guys and i'll uh see you soon all right all right jack we'll see you later man all right peace fellas thanks, jack. Uh, right. thank you guys Damn. This is true buzz that Mary Jane. Now we ain't new to this. From my stones and from my cannabis enthusiasts. Never heard a show as good as this. Uh, number one, it's the best. Bringing in many special guests in the industry of cannabis. Business owners to grow us, even artists you know of. So sit back and just roll up. Perfect show for my smokers. True buzz. Hey.